in and out of alcohol prohibition. You know, alcohol, the sale and possession of alcohol is legal in this country. It hasn't always been that way. There was a time when it was illegal to sell or possess alcohol. And then there was a time before that that it was legal. So uh, we have a period where it was legal, a period when it went into prohibition, and now a period where it's been legalized again. I want to look at the lessons, and I say lessons, nobody's learned them, but what can we take out of these changes in the treatment of the possession and sale of alcohol? Going into prohibition, and, and I do this because of the war on drugs. I equate alcohol. Alcohol is just as deadly, just as addictive as many of the drugs that are prohibited right now. But it's legal. So you look at alcohol. Now, when we made alcohol illegal in this country, did the consumption greatly decrease? Did alcohol-related addictions greatly decrease? No. The answer is simple. No. The prohibition of alcohol did not significantly impact the consumption or the level of addiction or anything else related to the sale, possession, and consumption of that particular substance. Don't we all well know the stories of during prohibition, the bootleggers running and, and, and making moonshine and things like this? It's legendary in this country. Why? Because the activity didn't stop. The laws making it illegal did not stop the behavior. They simply didn't. Why? Because it's a moral and a personal choice of a lifestyle. And if people want to engage in a certain lifestyle, they're going to whether it's made legal or illegal or anything else. So the first point is that we didn't stop the behavior that we desired to stop by making it illegal. What did happen going into prohibition? This was a boon, much more so than bank robbery or train theft or anything like that. The prohibition of alcohol was a boon to the business of organized crime. Al Capone and all the famous gangsters, their biggest business was not robbing trains, ro robbing banks, or anything like that. It was the sale of illegal alcohol. And what happened was a black market formed. It was still happening, but it went underground. But what did it do? Uh, what did it do? Law-abiding citizens, we'll say otherwise law-abiding citizens, were forced to interact with thugs and criminals, and so they were more exposed to a criminal element during prohibition than when it was not under prohibition. People that all they wanted to do was get some alcohol. These may have been addicts. These may have been recreational users, but these people otherwise would have gone peaceably and, and made their purchases and made their consumptions with no incident. But because of the prohibition, crime was raised. The organized crime took over the sale of alcohol instead of doing it by peaceable means through the free market and through voluntary exchange. It was done at much higher cost, much higher risk, and conducted through an element, uh, through a criminal element. So, going into prohibition, the activity doesn't stop, the crime goes up. What happens coming out of prohibition? The market immediately takes over. These products are available everywhere. They come down in price. And the criminal element is eliminated. 
And the gangs have to go back to robbing trains and, and banks. Crime went down. Listen to me, y'all. Crime went down when prohibition was lifted. And it made it cheaper, you would think. Oh, now the argument against making it legal. Oh, well, making it illegal is keeping people off of it. We've already discussed that. It doesn't. But if you made it legal, then people will, would run and go jump on it. It's the same argument just turned around. Oh, people would rush into the arms of these drugs. Be mass addiction everywhere. Society couldn't function. People be robbing left and right. No, they rob now because the price is so high because of the black market. So what you need to do to avoid property crime is to make the thing cheaper. To make the thing cheap, and then people don't have to steal as much to get it. But now when we made alcohol legal, did we all of a sudden see a rash epidemic of alcohol addicts? Did people just go jump and get hooked on alcohol? Did we have people out there left and right just that otherwise had no desire for alcohol? Oh, it's legal. Woo! Let's just go, go jump on and get. No, people know the risks. People know the benefits. People have certain desires for a certain type of lifestyle, and they they do the same thing they would have done anyway. People are not going out jumping on alcohol and getting severely addicted to alcohol. We didn't have an alcoholism epidemic when we made prohibition or when we lifted prohibition. Come on. And the sale of drugs is no different. Right now, the crime problem in our inner cities is not because of drugs themselves, but it's, it's exacerbated. You say, oh, look at all the property crime related to the consumption of drugs. Crack addicts going out knocking over cash registers to get $20 to go get their next crack hit. But that's the opposite. It's been caused because crack is so expensive, more expensive than it would be, because crack is not easily accessible, that they have to turn to crime. And so, you know, it's exactly the opposite. Crime increases and goes to the black market. The gangsters take over the sale and, and distribution of the product. And it forces people that are either addicts who are going to get it somehow anyway or recreational users to interact with the criminal element that they otherwise wouldn't be exposed to. And the risk and the cost created by the prohibition of the sale of these items drives the price higher, creating a more difficult situation for the unfortunate addicts that are going to be addicted anyway. And it causes them to commit property crimes. Now all that is enforceable. I don't care if somebody knocks over registered because they were on crack cocaine or because they had a bad day that day. The crime itself is still prosecutable. <laughs> If we can't prosecute things that are already prosecutable, then how are we going to enforce these draconian laws that are that are untenable? They're unenforceable. They are practically and for all practical practical purposes unenforceable. And so what do we have? We have whole areas of cities where the police won't even go because the drug gangs control the streets. And the problem is more prevalent, more crime-related than it would be. So we've been in and out of prohibition in this country. We didn't see any of the benefits that the prohibition of marijuana and cocaine are supposed to hold for us. And when we came out, we didn't experience any of the dangers that are being so highly uh, Counted if we lift this prohibition on the sale of drugs in this country. But people are sheeple and they don't learn.
they don't learn.